No long introduction. Can I 100% the Final Fantasy VII Remake without using Materia? You won't want to miss how I grind the Hell House down. The only rule is no Materia can be equipped. I can use absolutely anything else at my disposal. The first few chapters are quite easy, so we'll blast through them incredibly quickly. I don't actually have access to the Materia menu just yet, so I need to be careful to not use Materia accidentally. The only difficulty with this chapter was fighting Muscle Memory and Clown's direct commands. Lightning magic. Gotta heal up. Heal up and regroup. We gain access to the materia menu now and immediately bench anything that could be somewhat useful to fuel my sadism. After all that, we meet some flower girl. She seems definitely quite nice. I sure hope nothing bad ever happens to her. You are too weak to save anyone. <laughs> Not even yourself. <laughs> Cloud proceeds to fight to get to the station, and chapter 2 is fully over. Cloud meets Tifa in 7th heaven, talks to a child he has absolutely no relation to, and disturbs his neighbours. Tifa now finally joins the party, and we get to start learning weapon abilities. There are 6 different weapons for each character, and each of those weapons has a different ability to learn, so we need 6 abilities for each character. The shop owner proceeds to give us a weapon, and while it is weaker than the Buster Sword, we do want to learn Triple Slash as soon as possible, so we equip it and start maxing it out. We are now given free reign in this chapter to do any side quests, which we will obviously be doing all of them. We can take care of the Were-Rats really easily with using Triple Slash, and then we finally learn the ability, so now we can use that Triple Slash on the Buster Sword, so we switch it out again. We then get to do the very best part of the remake, which is finding three cats. This sucks. After we go through the factory to defeat some more monsters, we need to be sure to pick up every single piece of material we find to sell so that we can get the money to buy actually useful items. To increase runtime, we have to go through the factory again to fight a different kind of monster, which uh, flying enemies are awful. I don't know why there are so many in this game, but there are. We go to fight a big monster. When playing as Tifa, we should always be aiming to get unbridled strengths up to the full level 2 so that her attacks are faster and stronger. It will make a difference later on. Now for the final side quest of this chapter and it's from Chadley and it is uh, to use the assess materia twice. Well we cannot get 100% now we will still see just how close we can get to it. The bike minigame has absolutely no difference with or without materia. So we're just going to skip over all of it, but there were some pretty cool clips. The big arena is pretty easy, just keep triple slashing and it will target everything and they will all disappear. Roche is incredibly easy, just counter his normal swings. This is done by blocking in Punisher mode, which I don't think is actually said anywhere in the game, but it does it. And he will eventually go down. The one thing quicker than beating Roche would be you hitting that like and subscribe button right now. It really helps. We now get access to the full party, but other than that, this chapter and chapter 6 are pretty grindy and inconsequential and very fillery, but we still do get that summon material in chapter 6 for absolutely no reason other than the fact that I like the colour red I guess. Regardless, the game seems to be getting easier as it goes until chapter 7, the air buster. <laughs> Before we jump into that, we need to prepare. Throughout the chapter, we get several key cards, and we want to prioritize getting rid of the big bombers and AI cores. This will slow it down and lessen the frequency of the big group attacks. We also want to be upgrading our weapons and optimizing for physical attacks, which is easier than you think because we aren't spending a whole bunch of those points on stuff like extra material slots for work obvious reasons. The Air Buster is the first big boss of the game, and if we walk in unprepared, it will beat us in seconds. We want to keep attacking it with the characters behind it in the first phase, and guard when the cannons come out, because that will hurt. We need to be careful of the Tank Buster attack, and roll out of the way as soon as it comes out, or it will just be an insta-kill. When the arms are out, we need to be sure to focus on each one individually, and take it down, and then go after the other one. Eventually they'll be recalled, and it will pressure the Air Buster. While the Air Buster 
which is flying in phase 3, we need to use Barrett exclusively. When it goes into range, we switch to Cloud and Tifa. With our little skill and an insane amount of luck, we beat Chapter 7 and the Airbuster goes down. Reno is actually an absolute pushover. We just counter his attacks and use triple slash on the mines and he will go down within, I kid you not, a minute and a half. We now have Aerith in the party, who is actually the only magic attacker in this no materia run. We go through several battles with her until the chapter opens up with yet more side quests. We first defeat Shiva, just do favors and use Aerith's Tempest and it'll be all good. While we still can't use this summon materia, I do like the pretty colour. Cloud first finds a few children and defeats the monster terrorising them. Just use a good combination of Aerith and Cloud and it'll be pretty easy. We then get to defeat a bunch of moon drives made actually doable with Aerith because they become invincible to physical damage. Some old guy then wants us to visit a graveyard which we do defeating the monsters inhabiting that graveyard. Cloud gets to then play a very fun mini game called Whacker Box which is no different from the base game as you can't use materia in this mini game. We get the high score and some new items. We then get to now fight the Crow Mogger, which without lightning is certainly a challenge. We can actually distract it with Cloud to try to keep it in place while Aerith uses her Tempest ability. This will take some time and a few attempts, but we finally beat it after two deaths. All that's left in this chapter is to confront Rude, who, much like Reno, goes down with a few counters, but be sure to use Aerith too to deal that extra piece of damage. This chapter is very similar to the last one, with an exception to the Hell House. Usually, the Hell House isn't too bad, despite what you will see on the internet. When you learn how it works, you just counter with the magic opposite that of which it's currently using. Magic is obviously being used through materia. You see the problem. Much like a sophomore at a frat party, we need to raw dog this thing with everything at our disposal. The first phase is pretty easy, but when it enters phase 2, it uses God House mode, which decreases our physical attacks by a lot. We want to focus on using Aerith while distracting the Hell House with Cloud. Don't do what I did. If you get a limit break, save it for the final phase, please. After what seems like 20 minutes, we enter that final phase. We need to guard up until it comes crashing down, pressure it, and use abilities. It may take a few tries, but we keep at it, and the Hell House goes down. While it isn't needed, I would recommend doing the other arena challenges for the extra limit breaks and the items. We will not be able to get Aerith's limit break later, so 100% do that one now. The other thing needed from this chapter is the champion's belt from the squatting minigame. We will need this. I equipped it to Cloud immediately. I did Sam's other two side quests while I was here too. Side quests 13 and 14 are finished. These next few chapters are quite linear and relatively easy so we will blast through them pretty quickly. Abzu is very easy, just make sure you're healing with potions and enjoying the very ugly low res water. Oh my god, that's ugly. The rest of the chapter is pretty much a straight line, be sure to get all the chests for items and whatnot. The train graveyard is definitely everyone's favourite part of the game, and the bosses are even worse here without materia. The ghosts are even more annoying because they will start blocking physical or magical damage depending on how much you're dealing of that type that happens be sure to just switch to the other character the big ghost which i cannot remember the name of is more of the same of the like normal ghosts but make sure you are away from the screeches or it will paralyze you and you're pretty much dead at that point the other boss which i also can't remember the name of because i don't like this chapter was a little easier when it's flying just use Aerith and her tempest when it's charging at you use cloud you can also take out the wheels as cloud countering as well we unfortunately can't get Aerith's weapon here because you need to use the steel materia with that the weapon and the weapon ability she would have learnt cannot happen with a no materia run most of this chapter is pretty easy other than the hella troopers what is up with these flying enemies let them just come to you and counter with cloud we then get to fight reno and rude the first part of this fight is more of the same that we've just experienced because we're fighting them singly but when they're fighting together it can get pretty difficult try to avoid the pyramid and take out reno first as he is a lot harder to track the movement of because he moves around so much and he's very fast. After that, Rude is quite easy and goes down just as easily, but watch out for his shockwave because yikes. We now get to control Barrett and shoot some boxes. Oh, at last. The only difficult bit of this chapter 
is the boss fight at the end. Get unbridled strength level 2 with Tifa, or is it level 3 if you're using it twice? I'm not sure. And focus on the small guys first while using maximum fury with Barret. Be sure when the boss starts flinging guys, don't try to dodge it. You're not going to. Just block the attack and you'll still, like, not take as much damage. When the boss is staggered, use rise and fall with Tifa and max fury with Barret. And after a while, victory was ours. This chapter is a long one. So let's get all the side quests and optional stuff out of the way immediately, please. We head back to that graveyard in Sector 5 from Chapter 8 to beat up a couple of ghosts, and we don't have magic this time, so when they begin blocking physical attacks, we just have to wait it out. We then proceed to find Sam's missing chocobos, which we do, through beating another flying enemy, which it uses gravity, so we definitely need to take it out before our HP gets too low. We do the hard whack -a box challenges and gain all the items from it, that isn't a side quest, it's just good to do. After all that, we then go to the pull-up minigame to get a second champion's belt, which maybe it's not a necessity, but the champion's belt is so good anyway. Cloud then gets to play some music for some depressed people, and it makes them happy again. Bat is being searched for, so we have to beat up a Tonberry, which isn't actually that different than normal. Everyone's favourite character, Johnny, gets his wallet stolen, so we confront the thief, only to be told we then have to fight in the arena. So we do. While we're at the arena, we also finish off all the extra challenges so we can get those limit breaks for Barrett and Tifa. We next have to fight back through that underground facility from chapter 13 and fight a behemoth, which is actually quite easy. We just need to make sure that Tifa had unbridled strength mode at max and that Barrett was doing his maximum fury. After all that, we now have all the items to create the secret medicine for the doctor, so we give it back to him. And now to start the actual chapter, yikes. We get to visit everyone's second favourite area again, the sewers. After some shenanigans with a mouse of some variety, we get to fight Abzu again. This fight is almost identical to the one we've already beaten, other than the fact that he summons small monsters around the arena, so we need to triple slash them first and then focus on Abzu. One final piece of appreciation for this low res water, and Abzu is beaten again. Oh, but we're not finished yet. We now have to go back through the entire chapter to find Corneo's secret stashes and give them to the old lady from Sector 7. This means we have actually been able to beat every single side quest bar the, the one from Chadley, which is use assess once. This is a very short chapter, but don't let that fool you, because flying enemies again. Even the boss in this zone is a flying enemy. Oh my god, this game is still going. The Valkyrie isn't actually too bad, it just takes a while because only Barrett can actually hit it. We keep using maximum fury for what feels like an hour, and we finally beat it. Cloud and the gang attack the Shinra building. We have to go through not only a room full of enemies, but 100 flights of stairs. After that onslaught, which actually the stairs was more difficult, it's mostly story, but we get another set of arena challenges in this chapter, which of course at this point we have to do. These aren't too bad for the most part other than an extremely close call with Barrett at the end of his exclusive challenge. We are then forced to fight HO512 because I guess HO511 was already taken. He spits out a lot of smaller enemies that also self-destruct, so we need to use triple slash to take them all out before they've got the opportunity to kill the party. We stagger the boss and beat him with a maximum fury as per usual. This was actually one of my favourite chapters in this challenge, so let's dive right in. We find Red 13 almost immediately. Now, he is a party guest, not actually a member of the party, so I can't control him or his equipment at all, meaning that he can use magic without it being against the rules, as I'm not the one activating it, which means you can't call me out for cheating because I already did. Regardless, it isn't much of a boost at all, unfortunately. We constantly switch between the parties using the conveniently placed PHS terminals until the centipede boss, which I've also forgotten the name of. He's actually quite easy, just don't let Aerith get charged by him because my god, he hurts. We then get to fight Genova in one of my favourite fights in the game. We need to keep everyone at a good ATV because Genova can cast stop on a party member at any point and then deal 2,000 damage. We kept dealing damage until phase 2 begins. Genova now becomes invulnerable to everything until we take out the tentacles. 
We use triple slash and keep everyone's HP up. Once phase three is activated, we go all out on Genova with Bravers, Star Showers, and Tempests. We finally win. And uh, I guess it's just boss fight mania because next we get to fight Rufus Shinra, who is actually a joke. In the first phase, we need to counter Corkscrew and defeat his dog, Darkstar. Or is it Dawnstar? I don't know. This will immediately put us into phase two. I was struggling for quite a while to find a strategy to beat Rufus until I started using counter stance on him. If you time it correctly for when he shoots you at a close range, it will just actually knock off a third of his HP. Repeat this three or four times and you win, I guess. Next up is Barrett Aerith and Red 13 against the Arsenal. We first wait for Red 13 to use his abilities against the drones to stagger them and unleash a maximum fury on every single one of them. Whenever the Arsenal is charging up an attack, the cannon will be a weak point. If we use a maximum fury on it as soon as it appears, we can pressure the Arsenal itself. We also need to be careful of Cry Havoc, which is an instant game over. When it begins charging up, we attack it with every everything we have and we just barely beat the arsenal and with that the chapter in its entirety. There's another bike mini game which we will just skip over for the sake of your time because it's no different at all. This is now the point of no return so we stock up fully on everything we can buy at the item shop with over 50,000 gil left. I'm starting to think that I could have been a little more liberal with the potions earlier in the game. Oops. The Arbiters of Fate fight is a long and drawn out one, so instead of going by the individual phases, I'll instead instruct on how I beat each of them individually. I don't remember the names of any of these, so I'm just going to call them the red guy, the blue guy, and the yellow fellow. The red guy was both the easiest and the hardest individually. You can use Counter Stance as Cloud to immediately get him pressured, however if Cloud is downed like he was for me at one point, he becomes incredibly dangerous and can almost defeat the party by himself. The blue one is a melee specialist, so just to use Barrett and his maximum fury to beat him, and it goes without an issue. The yellow fellow will mostly just stun, but as I left him until last, it was quite easy to defeat him with everyone focused exclusively on him, and with that, the Arbiters of Fate all defeated. I have good news and I've got bad news. The good news is we've almost got this, there's only one fight left. The bad news. Sephiroth is in another league. He has several hard-hitting attacks that can almost down a party member. The first phase is actually quite easy and lured me into a fox sense of security as I was able to get him into phase 2 in under 2 minutes. However, he gets significantly more powerful as the fight goes on and as your party starts regrouping. His magic attacks need to always be blocked to reduce the damage down, otherwise it will just put you in the red immediately. Telluric Fury needs to be countered either manually with Cloud or or with counter stance, either one works. Alien Onslaught must be dodged, rolled around, and then it leaves an opening at the back, which then you can either fo focus thrust or attack with another party member. In phase three, he will begin infusing his attacks with magic of all varieties, which must be blocked or countered. If you try to dodge it, it will just hurt. At this point, Sephiroth is almost killing every party member in just a couple of hits, but despite it all, we ended up enduring to his final phase. This phase will start a countdown and when it reaches zero it will just kill all of the party and it's an unavoidable attack. Luckily I had saved a limit break because I knew this was coming up and with one final limit break from Cloud we beat Sephiroth and the challenge is over.